Welcome to the Unchief Debugging using System Console training video. My name is David Garcia and we will go through this training video together. For this training, we are going to go through a demonstration of how you can extract useful data from your design for your debugging process. This demo will show you two ways you can debug your design on an Intel FPGA. First, by using one of the available toolkits we have in System Console. We are running a design on the Intel Agile X7 FPGA F-Series Development Kit. The design consists of an external memory interfaces IP block, or EMIP for short, which serves as a link to an external memory. The EMIP IP is connected to an EMIP calibration IP block and a traffic generator. For this design, you need to make sure the EMIF calibration toolkit is enabled in the EMIF calibration IP. Go to the parameterization menu and make sure the Add EMIF Debug Interface option is selected in the EMIF Debug Toolkit slash onchip debug port. After enabling and compiling the design, open System Console. Go to the Toolkit Explorer pane. You should see any available toolkits in your design. Click on the toolkit you want to open. Toolkits provide you with useful information for debugging some of the IP in your design and even provide some control over them on the spot. Specifically, for the IMIF toolkit on this demo, you can rerun calibration of the external memory interface IP and extract calibration information from the toolkit, like the type of memory, the running clock frequency, and the write and read delays. We are going to focus on the Calibration Delays and Margins DQ table. For this part of the demo, we will try to get the same information from the Calibrated Delays and Margins DQ table from the IMIF Calibration Toolkit. We want to get the same data from a TICL script instead of relying on the toolkit. To achieve that, we are going to export the debug calibration port from the IMIF Calibration IP which gives you access to an Avalon memory map interface. Some IP in Quartus have this kind of interfaces for the user to connect it to any Avalon memory map master. You can connect a JTAG to Avalon master bridge to the exported debug port of the IMI calibration IP in the design to access it from System Console. A first step would be to check in the documentation what registers you need to read, how to access them, the kind of data you can get from these registers, and how to interpret that data. After checking the documentation, we see that we must make a series of read operations from multiple registers to get the information we want. Define the steps you need to take to get the information after checking the proper documentation. For this design, the IMIF calibration IP has many data structures that can be accessed through the debug memory map interface. All of this is documented in the external memory interfaces for Agile X7 Intel FPGA IP user guide, which is the IP present in this design. A 
After looking at the documentation and defining the steps you need to take, you need to start making the proper operations in the correct order. First, we need to open the service attached to Master Zero, which is the name of the JTAG to Avalon Master Bridge in the design. You can find the service path by using the full hierarchy path of the debug endpoint you want to access. Then, use the get service path command with the dash hpath flag to find the correct service path. Use the claim service command to open the service. After opening the correct service, we can start running the set of commands we need to extract the information we are looking for. For readability, we are first calculating the address we want to access before making any read operation on the memory mapped interface. We need to access many data structures inside the registers of the IMIF calibration IP to either retrieve a pointer to another data structure or get useful information like the size of some of these data structures. So it is key we keep track of what we're doing and why we're doing it. After getting the pointers for the data structures we are looking for, which in this case are the DQ out and DQ in calibration data tables, we store the output of the read operations to access these addresses later. With the last pointers we got, now we can extract the data we are looking for. Get the DQ in and DQ out data tables. According to the documentation, the base address and length of these tables is stored in registers in the memory map interface of the IMIF calibration IP. Since we made these readings previously, we can easily refer to these values when extracting the data. The num DQ IF0 variable is the number of DQ pins in the external memory. So this gives us the number of 32-bit words we need to read to get the complete set of data. After getting the lists of values we were looking for, we need to find a way to present this information in a more readable way. We can iterate through each element of these arrays and decode the information contained in each element. To do this, we need to make some bitwise operations, like masking and shifting, to extract information like the margins and calibrated setting for both read and write delay tables. The output of the commands we ran should look like this. We can write all of this on a script and run it. In the system console window, go to File, Execute Script, and select your script file. Click on the Open button to run the script. That concludes this training video. Be sure to check some more of our materials in our webpage to learn more about Quartus and the features it has to offer.